And in our next example, we're looking at how we generate power. And of course, one of the most eco-friendly ways of generating power is to use the potential energy of water to turn that into electricity. So let's say we have like a little generator right here. We have these little buckets. We have a pipe with water coming down from the source. Let's say water is coming out of the pipe at a, a rate of two cubic meters per second. It hits those little buckets, and of course the weight of the water will make the bucket go around, and when it gets to the bottom, the water will then run out. And so let's say that this mechanism is about 40% efficient. It takes 40% of the potential energy of the water and converts it to electricity uh, via this little water mill like that. All right, how much power is generated? Well, again, we can use the definition that power is equal to the uh, uh, work over time or the change in energy over time. And this, of course, the change in energy is the loss of the potential energy of the water is then converted into power. So here it's the other way around. We're taking the energy of the water and converting it into power and electricity. So, uh, of course, we're only 40% efficient, so the power generated is equal to the efficiency of the operation, 40%, times the change in the energy over time, so we don't get quite everything out of it that we would like. Energy, of course, that is equal to the change in the potential energy, mgh, over time. And, of course, in this case, um, the height is known, the mass is known, g is known, I guess everything is known. So we can just simply write it like that. This is equal to E G H times the amount of mass per unit time. So now we have to somehow relate the amount of mass of water that's going into our operation here to the amount of volume of water. And of course, a cubic meter of water has a mass of one ton or 1,000 kilograms. So the mass of one cubic meter is equal to 1,000 kilograms, which means with two cubic meters, we have 2,000 kilograms coming out of the pipe every single second, making that turbine turn around. All right, so this is equal to the efficiency of 0.4 times G, 9.8 meters per second squared, times H, which we said was 1.5 meters. So the water drops through a height of 1.5 meters as it's making the turbine turn around and then the amount of mass of water per unit time is 2,000 kilograms per second. So that means that two cubic meters of water have a mass of 2,000 kilograms. So now we need a calculator. Let's find out what the power output is of our little turbine there. So we have 0.4 times 9.8 times 1.5 times 2,000 and that's 11,760 watts, 11,760 watts. So that will power uh, typically about 10 or so homes. I think a home typically needs about 1,000 watts. Of course, at peak usage with air conditioners and all that, it's way more than that. But on average, over a 24-hour period of time, I would say, I would say most, uh, most houses use about 1,000 watts per hour over a 24-hour period of time. All right, so that's how we find the power output of a power generating system. And again, we're using the potential energy of water to convert it to electricity or to power.